Mobile broadband can be a great way to get fast speeds for a cheap price, but it can also be a bit finicky. We found there's a lot of mistakes that people make when setting up these solutions, which ruin your speeds. So in this video, we're going to explain the five big mistakes that people often make, which really slow down your 4G or 5G internet. Before we begin, click the link in the description below to view the best deals at the moment on the 3 5G hub. This is a 5G router that's really easy to set up and offers speeds of up to 700 megabits per second from our testing. And if you can't get 5G signal, the link in the description will also show you deals on the 3 4G hub, which still offers pretty good speeds in our experience. So the first big mistake a lot of people make with 4G and 5G routers is not positioning them correctly. Inside your router, there are little antennas which pick up 4G or 5G signal. The exact positioning of these antennas, and the router more broadly, can have a big effect on your speeds. Typically, the best place for a wireless router is on an upstairs windowsill, so that it has a bit of elevation, and so it's as close as possible to the nearest mobile network mast. But this isn't the whole story. When you set up your router, you should test a lot of different positions and run speed tests to see where you get the best speeds. It might be that moving the router 5cm over gives you a huge bump, and you should also try rotating the router to see if this helps. It can also be helpful to position the router on the side of your house nearest to the mast. That's where this website called CellMapper can come in handy. Basically, it just maps network masts in your area, allowing you to potentially point your router towards the closest one. At the moment, we think they don't really show all the 5G masts. You can see now they select 5G all these masks just disappear. But it's quite likely that 5G is emanating from the same mask that 4G is on, so you can use this as a rough guide at least, even if you do use 5G broadband. The second big mistake people make is not using an external antenna if you need one. Most 4G and 5G routers have what's called SMA ports. These allow you to plug in an antenna that works externally to the device rather than relying on the ones inside the router. Now, you don't need to use external antennas all the time. They're really for if your 4G or 5G signal is a bit patchy. So again, looking at cell mapper, if you're quite a long way away from the mast and your speeds are a bit inconsistent, it could be that an external antenna would be useful. You can just plug antennas directly into the router. These are often called rabbit ear antennas, you can probably tell why. But you can also get an antenna installed on your house, which is a better choice in remote areas. If you're using 4G, for example, to get online in the countryside, it's quite common for the provider to come and install an antenna on your house to help you get the best signal. So basically, to connect to the network tower, your router can use different communications bands to achieve this, and normally it'll try to select the best ones by itself, but sometimes it, it gets this really wrong. So to fix this, you can go into your router's settings and change what bands it's using. So if you click a tower on cell mapper, you can actually see what bands it's using. This is 4G LTE, it's using 1, 3, and 20. So you wanna go into your router settings and line up the bands with this, doing a bit of experimenting. It's not really an exact science. It's just worth going in and seeing if other bands can help you get better speeds. So since cell mapper doesn't really have a lot of 5G data, if you're using 5G broadband, it's worth going in and just trying different combinations of bands. If you're using 3, for example, the N78 band is the best one for 5G, so it's definitely worth trying that and seeing if your local mask supports it. Another common issue with 4G and 5G broadband is people's routers getting interfered with. Since you're using wireless technology to get online, not just for your Wi-Fi network like you would with a normal router, interference with other devices that emit radio waves can be quite common. Fortunately, it's pretty simple to know if this is happening. You just want to keep your router away from any other devices that could be causing interference. One good example is microwave ovens, although it's quite uncommon, I guess, that you'd have your router near the kitchen. But we've seen this happen more commonly with baby monitors. They're just more likely to be on a windowsill upstairs near your router. So it might be worth doing a quick check to see if there's anything within about a meter radius of your router that could be emitting a lot of radio signals. And finally, another common mistake we see people make is using the wrong mobile network for their area. The performance of different networks can vary massively from street to street. So before you get set up with 4G or 5G broadband, it's always worth going to the network coverage map and putting in your postcode. So we have widespread really good 4G coverage here, but the 5G is basically non-existent. But these maps aren't perfect. As you can see here, apparently there's a spot of outdoor 5G here, which 
doesn't really make a lot of sense. Like it looks like there's a tower about here somewhere and I think the map thinks that this area is not being blocked by a building from that direction but I really would not rely on the coverage here. The good thing about 3 is they will allow you to test this before you commit to their mobile broadband. On their 4G hub and 5G hub routers they have a 30 day money back guarantee so if you're not completely satisfied with the speeds you can always send the router back and get out of the contract. With other networks, you'll need to do a bit of testing with your phone to see exactly what speeds you'll get before committing. And make sure to click the first link in the description to learn more about 3's home broadband products. The issue is, sometimes people just buy the wrong network because testing what the speeds will be in advance can be a bit of effort. So a lot of people go with EE for example because they have the best 4G coverage in the UK and their wireless broadband is a bit more expensive which sort of implies that their network is a lot better which on average it is but there are still pretty huge patches even relatively urban areas that don't get great signal especially on 5G. Even in the center of Oxford here, if you're on one of these borderlines between outdoor and indoor, like at our address here, your 5G signal may be patchy. So basically, it really pays to do your homework and see what the network is like before you buy. And you might need to switch if your signal is quite patchy at the moment. The best thing to do is get a phone on the network you want to test. Maybe you can borrow one from a friend. Then do some speed tests to see what sort of signal you'll get. If you're having issues with your 4G or 5G speeds and none of these methods worked, leave a comment below and we'll help out. And if you're considering getting started with 4G or 5G broadband, we'd definitely recommend beginning by looking at 3's 4G Hub and 5G Hub products, which you can learn more about using the links in the description.